Welcome to our presentation. My name is Chris Blanus, Business Development Officer at Verson Funding. We are a non-recourse factoring company, and we provide financing to businesses that typically don't qualify for traditional financing, and in many cases, businesses that don't qualify for factoring from other companies as well. And I'm going to give you a few examples of some tr companies we were able to help with our financing. I think examples are a great way to illustrate how factoring can benefit real-life companies and when it might be appropriate for you to refer your client to Verson Funding. First client I describe is a security software company. This is a public company. Uh, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of details so that you can't identify the specific company, but I think you can relate to the specific challenges this company had encountered. They were very focused on merging with a company with a complementary technological offering. And during that merger period, they neglected other customers. Um, they lost some business, they weren't developing new products as they had been for a long time, and as a result their financial performance suffered, and then after all this effort, all this time, the merger fell through. As a result of the weakened financial condition of this company, the bank pulled their line of credit, so this company was without a source of liquidity. We stepped in, provided factoring, in that we were purchasing receivables from a few of their key customers, giving them the working capital they need to get over this period, to make it over this hump, and bridge them to a point where they're bankable again. Next example is a medical equipment company. This company had a very specific type of technology that they had licensed and a very innovative treatment for chronic pain. And there was great demand for this product from the US military because what it could do, among other things, was relieve people injured in war or lost limbs. It can help alleviate that phantom pain that many would encounter uh, even with a lost limb. And this company, technology was able to, through a few treatments, really eliminate it, not just treat it, but eliminate it. But this company was very thinly capitalized, and because the technology was new and they were just winning over new customers, their revenues were very erratic, no interest from banks. Uh, and they had a few invoices outstanding, and as many, many on this call may know, the government will pay, but slowly. So they had some big receivables outstanding for a long time. We factor those receivables from government entities keep this business afloat. Uh, and unlike many of the factors, we were okay with the erratic nature of the revenues. And we factored only a few invoices from this customer, and we'll go months without seeing an invoice from them, but we understand. We understand that's part of their path to success. Next is a commercial printer. You know, sort of an old line company, but they're still out there. And this particular company is focused on printing of invoices and statements. Uh, if I recall, this particular one had a lot of work with some of the, the large uh, mobile phone companies. And while many people receive their bills online in electronic form, there are still tens of millions that receive their phone bills in paper form as well. The challenge that this particular company had incurred it was it was recently acquired by a, uh, a, new, a new entity or new, new owners. And they did it in, with not enough cash. So the seller financed the bulk of the purchase price. And as some of this call can relate to, the seller was a bit of a pain in the butt, was a nudge, <laughs> so to speak, was in getting involved in the operation of the business, was interfering with customer relationships. So our the buyer, our client, wanted to get that seller out of the picture as soon as they could. They did a sale lease back on some of their equipment to pay down the loan, um, but they weren't able to pay her off. We stepped in, factored a bunch of invoices, gave the seller a little more cash, got her out of the picture, and are providing some ongoing liquidity to this company. Next is a shipping, shipping supply manufacturer. Uh, this is a very large company, international in their scope. They had a very large bank facility in place with a, a large, uh, one of the nation's largest banks actually, but there were a lot of limitations on it. A lot of concentration limitations, a lot of restrictions, and they just couldn't get the cash they needed to be successful. They we're in the process of opening up a new location. That was a bit of a drain on cash for this, this business. Uh, what they were able to negotiate was for their bank to release just a single customer's accounts receivable. And we were stepping in and factoring receivables only due from that one customer. Now, most factoring companies will not consider that. We're looking at 100% customer concentration. Now, the concentration is with a customer that we believe is very, very strong. But many factoring companies will not, and many cannot. Many factoring companies have restrictions put upon them by their funding sources that won't allow that type of customer concentration. But we are able to do it. And actually, I think we're going to have exposure approaching 15 million with that single account debtor. That's also a size 
that would eliminate most other factors and that they have restrictions on how much they can have outstanding with any customer. So this is a great example. We're going to bridge this company probably for a couple of years till that new location gets established, till this company has the cash on hand that they need. I've got a couple examples here of businesses in crisis, and that can be a, a opportune time for you to refer a factoring company. Because we're okay with a company being in distress provided they've got some good, strong receivables. This first example is a long-standing family-owned business. And the issue this company encountered was negligence. An employee made a mistake, a major mistake, resulting in the terrible injury of just an innocent person using their product. Well, this gave them horrible press. They lost a bunch of their customers. They may lose a license to perform one of their most important services, but this business is in trouble. Um, the bank froze their line of credit. It was typically a $4 million line. The bank froze it at a million, which just isn't enough to meet their ongoing working capital needs, and they really need cash. Uh, they want to try to do what they can to preserve their existing customer base. Now, they're fortunate in that their offering is unique. They don't have a lot of competitors for their offering, uh, and they w they're hopeful that they'll be able to make up for their mistakes. There'll probably be a large settlement involved. Um, but they need to survive to do that, and if we can help them survive, we'll have hundreds of people continue to be employed. We'll have the victim of the negligence be able to get paid properly for their pain and suffering, uh, and we're hopeful we can save this company. The next company in crisis had a very different problem, but again, one that we were able to get comfortable with because they've got good customers. This was a privately owned service business, and a key manager was indicted on fraud for their actions at a previous company that they owned. Now, this automatically triggered a, an event of default on the bank loan, so the loan got frozen. Honestly, the way we look at the deal, as long as the receivables we buy are good, we're really not that concerned about whether or not this person really did commit fraud. W the owner expects to be exonerated. They, they tell us they're innocent, but again, it doesn't matter to us. What we're hopeful to do is back to the receivables, and w we verify every one. So uh, if this guy <laughs> is truly someone who perpetrates fraud, he's not going to get away with that with us. But in any event, we're going to verify every receivable we factor, just like we do for every other customer, hopefully provide them the working capital they need. And again, our hope is to keep this business going. There are lots of employees of this company. They provide a valuable service to hundreds of customers, and we want to keep that going. And that's our hope, to bridge them through this really tough time. This is another great example. It's a consumer electronics manufacturer. Now, many factoring companies won't touch consumer electronics in general. There's, there's risks involved. For one, th defects. There could be a defect in a production run that isn't noticed through initial testing until the product is shipped to customers, and then we've got a whole lot of returns coming back, and that can really do damage to a factor. But we, be we became comfortable with the product. We became comfortable with the, the customers, most importantly, very key customers. And why this particular client needed help was that risk I described, was they had a huge shipment go out and they came back. Those high returns triggered an event of default on their bank line, uh, and we're going to step in and provide the liquidity this company needs until uh, they regain the trust of the banking industry, and that may take them a couple of years. But it's just another example of a company that just can't get financing from banks, and this company as well, they're very large. And they've got a lot of great contacts in the industry of finance, and they talk to every factor out there. But because of the size, this is a very large transaction, and the industry and what was going to be some very high customer concentrations with a number of large retailers, there was nobody else out there that would, that would consider this deal. But it was a good fit for Versant. Here's a startup company. And you don't hear a lot about factor, factoring companies being involved with startups, but here's how. We factored the first invoice this company ever issued. So you're right, a factory company can't help start a business, like we can't give cash up front for them to produce anything, but we can provide them liquidity as soon as they get that first delivery out. And this company uh, is a seller of tablet PCs, uh, Android-based, lower end, much, much cheaper than an iPad, also much lower performance than an iPad, but there's, there's clearly a niche for this product, and they're also developing a line of, of 3D televisions. Now, the owners of this company had no industry experience, they didn't have good credit, and they had a history of a few failed businesses. This was not bankable, but they managed to get some investors and were able to arrange to get 10,000 units of their product produced, and a couple of major online retailers interested in buying it. But they knew, as soon as they shipped this stuff, they were going to have to wait probably more than 60 days to get paid. Uh, and they had a 
manufacturer in China that while they convinced them to manufacture and ship the product, they were not going to wait very long to get paid. But we were able to sort of get the wheels of production in motion, get that cycle going, and we've been able to factor many additional pr production runs for this company. And w they're still working on that 3D TV, but we're hopeful that we'll be involved in factoring the invoices for that product as well. We also here at Versant do some debtor in possession financing. Not a lot, but for companies that are currently in bankruptcy and working their way out, many many times we can provide them a li liquidity working capital facility uh, to help them through that period. And this company I'm profiling here was actually a manufacturer of prefabricated metal buildings, like big sheds and big warehouses, sort of, you know, not very fancy, um, but can be put up very quickly. But m these guys got hit really hard by the recession. Um, business just disappeared. They went into more of a, a maintenance mode, um, entered bankruptcy protections to try to restructure their debt, and we were able to supplement their working capital to get them through that period. Um, as a result of our help, they were able to retain many employees, managed to survive a little longer, uh, and we're hopeful they will eventually dig out of bankruptcy and find more long-term financing. I'd like to thank everyone for joining our call today. I think uh, these examples are a great way to illustrate how we can help companies with our financing program. On the screen now, you'll see my contact information. Don't hesitate to reach out if you think I can help anybody or if you've got any question that I've left unanswered. I think factoring is a great alternative when traditional sources aren't available. Factoring can provide a bridge until such time as company can qualify for more traditional sources. Thanks again. I'm Chris Lanus, and I hope to talk to you soon.